Hi there, I'm Glenn Mitchell, and I'm gonna talk about the screen blending mode in this episode. The screen blending mode is another of the layer blending modes that corresponds to something in real life. I mentioned in the previous episode how the multiply blend was like taking two slides, sticking them in the same slide projector, and projecting them on the screen, and we get a darker result. Well, the screen blend is like taking two slides, putting them in separate projectors, and pointing them at the same screen. We get a lighter picture. Screen is the opposite of the multiply mode, Let's take a quick look at the math, and then we'll come back. I'll demonstrate the screen mode in action, and we'll talk about its practical uses. The math for the screen blending mode is a little more complicated than our previous examples. Active is the value of the active layer. Underlying is the value of what's visible underneath. We're going to keep our example simple. We're going to assume an RGB photo, 8 bits per channel. That means each channel can go from 0 to 255. And we're going to assume that the active value is midtone gray, 127, and so is the underlying value. It's also 127. The screen blending mode is the inverse of the multiply blending mode. And the math looks a little more complicated, but really all we have is a little bit of multiplication, division, and subtraction. I'll get to the formula in just one second. One last reminder, let's talk about the order of operations for a basic algebra formula. We do what's inside parentheses first, then we do multiplication and division, followed by addition and subtraction. With a screen blending mode, the blended result starts by taking 255 and subtracting the active value. That's what goes inside the leftmost parentheses. We also take 255 and we subtract the underlying value. That goes in the rightmost parentheses. Take those two values, multiply them together, and divide by 255. And then we take that result and we subtract it from 255. Let's actually walk through one of these together. Active is 127. Underlying is 127. So we start with 255 minus the active layer. That's minus 127. That would be 128. We take 255 and we subtract the underlying value. That would also be 128. So we take 128, we multiply it by 128, and we divide that by 255. We can simplify everything that's inside those parentheses, and it comes down to 63.25. We subtract that from 255, and that would give us a result of 191.75. And if we round that off, we then get a tonal value of 192. So we started off with tonal values of 127 for both the active and the underlying, and we get a pixel that's considerably brighter, one that's up in the quarter tones. Now that we're familiar with the math for the screen blend mode, let's see it in action. We'll go up here, we'll change from a normal blend to screen blend. We can see that the photograph has lightened generally. We could pull the opacity up, we'll see much more of the screen effect here. As with the multiply blend, we don't have to use 100% opacity. We can use reduced opacity. Where multiply had its biggest impact on dark pixels, screen blend mode is most helpful when we have a photograph that's been underexposed. Because all but the very darkest pixels will be significantly lightened with screen mode. I have another sample photograph to show you here. Same sample I used in the previous discussion about the multiply blend mode. Let's go ahead, add a couple of color sample points. We'll add one to the black here, and we'll add one to the red hat again. Again, we'll change the mode to lab so we can watch the lightness value. And now we'll go ahead and apply a screen blend mode. And let's tone that down a little bit, go to 50%, and let's look at our before and after. Before our black pixel had a lightness value of six, and the color sampler for the red hat had a lightness value of 34. After we apply the screen blend mode, the color sampler for the black paint gone to 10 for lightness, and the hat has increased to 45. So again, we've gone from 6 to 10 and 34 to 45. 50% screen, probably still a little harsh here. We can see this on the paint here. It's lost all detail. Again, we could feel free to pull this down. We might want to pull this down to something like 25% in order to retain a little bit of detail here between the paint and the white plastic carrier. I'm Glenn Mitchell from thelightsright.com. Cheers.